Okay. Great to see your face, man. <laughs> I had just an interview one and a half hour long. One and a half hour? Yeah. So now I drink beer. <laughs> so you should be good with me having a prepared uh, three hour. That's fine, right? You have nothing yeah. else to do. <laughs> yeah, the other was like a live something like metal TV or something. Oh, that's that's awesome. With two oh. guys talking. <laughs> Two, okay. Three guys, with you included, I guess. Three, yeah. Um, okay, um, let me start. Um, first of all, uh, being in, at my age, uh, you are 10, I think 10 is here, older, uh, years older than me. I still consider the 2000 as very, very um, early. I mean, it's not the past. However, thinking that the master plan debut was released 20 years ago, man, um, <laughs> Nearly 21. <laughs> oh, man. How does it feel from your side? Uh, it's, it's a weird feeling. It's like uh, this 20 years went too fast, you know? Mm -hmm. Because I think it's when you get older, it's like, where's the time flies, you know? It's like uh, weird. And I think also something has to do that I was getting more busy in my studio business here in, in Slovakia. It started like 2008, I guess. Okay. And uh, till now it's 15 years, so it's it's like I was not paying attention about making album touring, making album touring, you know, so much because uh, the business is hard. I'm honest in, in in the music scene, you know, some big bands are making a lot of cash with touring, and other bands struggling, and you know, and some people fans don't know about it, you know. It's like, well, they're saying, well, they're not doing anything, so. Basically, I had a lot of business in my studio and I was happy about it. And uh, I could live still from making music with uh, other people, creating, right. mixing, recording, you know, this kind of thing. Even and now I'm, now I'm back slowly that I say, okay, now it's time for master plan. Although it has been hard uh, for a long time for bands. However, after the pandemic, things have gotten worse, right? Yeah. Even now. So you have this gap, like you said, you have big tours happening attract a lot of people but then you have the other the medium or the average let's say bands the smaller bands struggling yeah That's so true. i i see what you're saying i don't i don't think you need to apologize about master plan not being so active i think people with a brain understand mm -hmm. Should. That's why that's why we're also uh, now getting on a co-headlining tour, which is a bit more secure for us mm -hmm. to have two bands in the same kind of category or level with Kashi and Firewind, and uh, we have a promoter who's taking care about all the risk. So, you know, to be honest, ten years ago I said already to my band, um, I think we're not touring anymore, Ooh. and I just played festivals all the time the last ten years, and. Uh, because festival is a kind of secure stuff. They send you the money, you book and flights, you fly, have fun, and you come home with some little extra, you know, money. But if you're touring, you have to, all the risks by the band, and that's it's a difference, you know, normally. But this guy convinced me some months ago or six months ago to tour again. So it's it's a kind of challenge, you know. It's like I'm quite happy about it because it's uh, also pushed me a little bit more to finishing the new album we do with Masterplan, you know. So I was about to complain because you are co-headlining with Firewind in, the, in Europe, but then Firewind are coming to the US and I was thinking, why don't Masterplan join in? And I, again, I, I don't want to sound selfish, but this is how <laughs> a fan thinks about these things. Why don't they come together <laughs> in the US? Right? I didn't know about it. He, he announced it yesterday, right? And uh, mm -hmm. I said, oh, would be a chance to go to America, but nobody asked me. <laughs> so, oh man! But we have another chance uh, to do uh, some touring again with uh, Firewind, and uh, we talked about it already. And at the end of of two thousand twenty four, maybe November, we go to South America. South America, not North. No, South America. Come on, man. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> where, where are you based? Which which city you are? I am in Chicago. Chicago. Okay. But you are a Greek guy? or I am Greek. I am Greek. I have been here for the last uh, uh, 14 years. 
Oh, okay, cool. Oh, I missed my chance with Master Plan, man. I, I missed that. Anyhow, <laughs> I hope we can make <laughs> something happen. I don't know. Um, yeah. So let's talk about the, the release. Uh, although uh, it has been out in Europe, still in the States, I think it will come out in January. So yeah. how much work did you do on the recording? Did you uh, remaster this uh, the mm -hmm. album? Did you do anything? No, I was asked if we should do it, and I said no. Because for me, the anniversary album is basically just a reminder to the fans, which doesn't have it. And we put the extra bonus tracks and uh, this kind of compilation song, Black Dog from that Zeppelin cover we made, which was not on the album as well. And uh, But the very, very main reason is the video part, which I had lying in my studio and in a private kind of you know room and and I thought it would be nice to see the fans uh, that they can watch it after 20 years, the original lineup, you know, because we had a huge start and a big hype in the beginning. So we, we had Breakers Border Award we were achieving. Um, I think at that time, I don't know what, what now the sales are, but at that time, after six months, we had already 100,000 copies uh, selling and uh, I was really proud and I thought it gets further and further. And then we had this nice touring and we were pretty good um, on the end of the tour. I think we played maybe already 35, 40 shows or something. And then we filmed this show and I want that people see this beginning of, of master plan lineup and not, not just having it in my private collection and nobody seeing it. It's, it's, it's for me kind of sad, you know? And I thought this could be great with an anniversary idea. So. Normally, I would say, why we shouldn't make an anniversary album 20 years, okay. But come on, every band so sooner or later have an album which is 20 years old, you know. But I thought this is something we, we didn't say. This part of the video and the private part of the video, you didn't see it, right? So far. I have seen only the, the live footage. I haven't seen the backstage footage. Yeah, and this is kind of... Uh, something very personal you people see how we react in between the members how, how our friendship was and uh, very very euphoric you know and uh, that's what i wanted to say and uh, people ask me already what about the next album the aeronautics you make auto next year which is already january right <laughs> well, maybe, maybe 25 i'm not sure um to make the same i said no you know for me it's doesn't make sense to make anniversary anniversary so let's let's make some new album and then this is kind of special album you know although for example uh, mk2 uh that did not have a vinyl release right yeah yeah so if you are not say this is an anniversary but re-release stuff just to make them available again i would personally i would appreciate to have it on vinyl too yeah I talked with AFM already two years ago about it, and they said, yeah, we will do it, but first we do aeronautics, which we, they did already. Mm -hmm. uh, it's already out, I don't know, six months or the beginning of the year. And um, I said, but MK2 is the only one which doesn't have vinyl, and uh, they promised me they will do it sooner or later. Yeah, yeah, because we have also to consider that we are talking about 20 years. That is one and a half generation of uh, metal fans even more so people yeah. have missed stuff and it's good to um, reintroduce some of the stuff that we have been originally introduced however i mm. totally understand the economics of this and how this mm, these days I, i'm not sure the physical product how um, profitable is that but anyhow anyhow um you mentioned about the bonus tracks mm -hmm. uh, i could not find where the Kid Rock Zone comes from? Uh, it was um, on Japanese release. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. It was on a Japanese album because they didn't want it enlighten me on the album. What? Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> so you replaced enlightening me with a Kid Rock Zone? Yeah. They wanted it, not us. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah that, that's well, I, I'm shocked to say the least. I have no idea why they did that. Enlighten me is uh, I still remember listening to that song, the first song. It's yeah, wow. It's like, uh, it's like imagine I was talking to the label, um, what's the name, Avalon, Marquis Avalon, and I said, Why, you, why you don't want this song? Enlighten me. I mean, people love it in Europe. Yeah, but Japanese fans doesn't like this style. 
Ich so, hä? <lacht> What? <lacht> you know, okay, what is so brutal different? You know, it's, it's, it's a bit more modern, it's a bit different than normally what people expect from us. But Kid, Kid Rocks On is not better song than, than this, you know, for my taste. Oof. And uh, the funny thing is, the album came out, and then I see Burn Magazine, you know, Burn Magazine, the biggest in Japan. And import uh, single shots, and like me, was on number one. <laughs> <laughs> So that means, okay, something the label did not write. <laughs> so so that, that's where the song came from. So so we put it now on this, you know. We are talking about poor decisions, right? Poor decisions. <laughs> yeah. um, and and uh, you uh, commented on the DVD footage that we have, the live performance. So that performance was professionally filmed, right? So why didn't, haven't you released that the, uh, so far? I mean, what was the intention at the first place to record, to film that show? First, we, we um, this show was a support show from, from Hammerfall, you know, we, we toured together in whole Europe and some different third band was in front of us, like uh, Dream Evil or Nostradamus. Um, so they played half of the tour each and um, then I heard from, from, from Hammerfall that they wanted to release uh, soon a DVD from this tour in Gassenberg mm -hmm. and uh, that the film crew is coming and the film crew came, came to us in the dressing room and asked if we want also be being filmed for money of course and uh, they would film it and then they would give me then the material direct after the show and I can take it home and that's what we did so I asked the band members first, Johan, of course, and the rest of the band, and then everybody was excited. Yeah, let's do it, let's do it. We, who knows, we should make something, you know? And then I called AFM Records from backstage, and I said, hey, I called to Hamburg in the daytime. I said, they want to film us. Are you paying for this? <laughs> it was around 4,000 euro, you know, they wanted. No, 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 this is too early. You need minimum two albums before you make DVD. And I said, no, they're not interested. And then Johan said, we should do it. We don't fucking care about the label. So we paid it by our own money from the merchandise, from our T-shirt. Wow. And uh, so that's how we did it. And then we took it home. I spoke with AFM. So we have it. You want to take it? No, maybe in some years. But the problem is then Jorn left the band. The record label owner died uh, when the aeronautics came out uh, on the same week, uh, January 2005. So nobody was responsible for this idea anymore. Oh. Then we had a new singer, and then you think it's stupid to release a DVD with the old lineup, you know? And for me, over the all the years, I was sometimes watching it, like uh, I had a VHS version out of it. It was a kind of rough mix from the, from the producer. Mm -hmm. And the uh, audio material I had on my computer already and was fooling around with all the channels, you know? I had it and uh, I needed to fix some kick drum, part which they forgot to record the second kick drum mm -hmm. so i was fooling around i had it always in my head and i said but the anniversary album would be a good reason to release it because then we can show the first lineup you know that's how the idea came and so i was contacting afm last year in july and i said i'm mixing already and editing this material what do you think oh it's a good idea and then <laughs> can you pay can you pay now <laughs> <laughs> so they paid me they paid me then the budget for for mixing it and uh, ed i edited the video as well in my um, music program pro tools and uh, somehow I'm, i'm pretty proud about it and uh, i sent it then to uli kush because mm -hmm. he didn't know about it and i hoped that he likes it because it's it's sad when some ex-member says i don't want this because i'm on the video you know But he loved it and he was really happy about the sound as well and uh, that I fixed his kick drum right. So everything was fine, he said. <laughs> and yeah, that's that's the main idea for the for the anniversary, the video for me, at least. Um, is there anything that comes to mind when you think of that, not that show only, that uh, because you were, you the band went almost everywhere, right? With that, with the first album. What is the first thing that you remember from 2003 and the tour that you did? I think we, I remember we started somewhere in uh, 
Osnabrück, Germany, then to Holland, Belgium, and then to Paris. And Paris was like our album release. So the album, the first, you can say the first one or two weeks, nobody knew us. Hmm. You're, you're supporting a band and they're watching us like, eh? <laughs> ah, this is the master plan, but it's, we know just enlighten me, the singer, you know, that's it. And then the album came out and slowly the people learned the songs and were singing with us like after after one month, to be honest. So after after six weeks, or I don't remember how long the tour was, or maybe two months, um, people loved us. But still in Gothenburg, mostly the people came for Hammerfall. They didn't know us. You know, it was kind of weird. But then after that, the whole year we were touring and going to South America, and many festivals. There's a big list on this kind of video. Yes. I don't remember who, how many shows, but it was. I was like, wow, we did so many shows. I didn't remember that. <laughs> so I was a lot of time away from home. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and we had also some professional recording video material from TV in Japan, which I got the tape, but the audio is not able to fix it because it's um, stereo recording. And I felt sorry for that because we could use it as well. But there are some mistakes and some bad sound and I don't want to release it like that. You know. maybe, just I... on, maybe just on YouTube for fun, you know, not for professional. Oh yes, you can do that. But however, live music uh, has has mistakes, right? I mean, mm -hmm. unless well, I shouldn't speak to uh, on behalf of everyone. Yeah. Who expects a band to be perfect? I mean, it's not it's not symphonic music. Anyway, no, that's, that's that's not the key. But you know, it's different when you when you in a concert and somebody has a wrong note or wrong tone or wrong text, and in, in one half minute you forgot about it. But at home, the people sitting there with a drink and watching, ah, let's look, he made a mistake. And then he sent it to a friend, here, he made a mistake. <laughs> That's a highlight nowadays, you know, of the show. <laughs> it's like, how many times you see bad singing from famous people, like, uh, I don't know if it's Guns N' Roses or who else, you know, like, I hate this, you know. <laughs> Everybody was this mobile in front of you, you know. True, at least 20 years ago, was it not like that? Uh, who listens to music? No, I shouldn't say that. I mean, listening to live music through uh, someone's uh, phone, it's not live music, it's something else. Yeah, but let's... Yeah. <laughs> how does it feel for... Uh, how did, did it feel going through that footage that it was 20 years ago? Uh, did you make mistakes? <laughs> uh, I did, yeah, I did some. I remember I had... Um... Um, I was uh, having this black shirt here half open on my arms and then I made clapping hands to the people and then I went uh, something and my tuner went out of key, my guitar went totally out of key, of course I fixed it you know. and and when you know the cameras in front of you, you, you're you more stiff you know, you feel like concentrating please concentrate and then mistake happened number one, no, <laughs> and your brain is like somewhere else you, you, you can't enjoy it anymore, at least for half of the song. And uh, yeah, there's some, some mistakes, but the drums are real, the vocals are real, and uh, some part is bass is real, keyboard. Honestly, so the, the band sounds it, great and looks great. And yeah, that, that's, what, that that's what, I what I wanted to show. I mean, Jon is just on, on top, you know, he's just amazing. <laughs> yeah. I like that didn't see it. shirt, like uh, something like Coverdale, something like. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so you mentioned also the master plan of stage uh, footage. Is there something that you miss from uh, the atmosphere that line up the um, the chemistry that line up had? It's like uh, something special. It's part of the moment. It's you can't. Uh... Of course, it was beautiful, and I remember still everything. But when you see all the details of the talkings, and uh, of course, I needed to cut something out because the video material material was around uh, nine hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had many, many. Um, yeah, but not everything was interesting, you know. So we we just took the highlights to showing how uh, how our stage was built up, the, the roadies. Um, yeah, food situation we 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 were interviewing ourselves uh, Uli Jorn and me and uh, then you see we have a lot of fun backstage uh, singing making jokes about really stupid crazy stuff 
I mean, we were not the youngest and at that time, you know, at least me, I was 40 something. And uh, yeah, 44, <laughs> 20 years. And um, missing, it's nice to remember that, but it's not, not that I'm missing. I, I, I have a pretty good feeling with this lineup we have now. It's the same kind of chemistry. We, we, we don't have any, any how you say, uh, 20 years ago it was more about the future it was about building up the band and this now now we're 20 years on the market and now we do it to, to be honest we do it just for fun correct you know i don't need to make this band uh, going to make money you know it's it's like i told you the business is hard um making albums is more ba basically like like an image kind of thing that you have saying we have something new people see new videos and you keep, you keep rolling someone somewhere in the memories of the people and uh, being still present in a way and not disappearing somehow. Mm -hmm. But that's why when we, when we play shows or festivals, uh, it's more like a fan, uh, fun, fun uh, idea. It's not, you know, we are our, some of our band members or mostly of them have jobs, you know, and uh, it's not about making more money with master plan and quitting the job. You know, this, this is not happening anymore. It's like, you know, it's like you're meeting friends and play and enjoy the people in front of you. That's and the kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You said you are working on a new Master Plan album or not? You said you, you do, right? Yeah, the album is uh, written. Um, I'm already mixing the first song, which mm -hmm. is um, coming out end of January as, as a lyrics video. The second song I, I will finish soon. I need still lyrics writing and uh, hope he, uh, Rick is singing it soon before Christmas and then we can release it in February before this tour starts. And uh, there will be hopefully a real video. So this is uh, the idea. So everything is so different nowadays that I'm still not used to it because 10 years ago you make an album and then after four, five, six months it comes out, bang, one single maybe, one video. Dang. Right. Now... Yeah, you should make a song, text video, then a real video, another text video, <laughs> maybe another song, and then the album comes after one year out. I said, what is this kind of business, you know? But that's, oh, then, then people always hear something from you every two months. I like Judas Priest is doing now. They, they had one or two months ago the first, and now the second, and soon the third, and then the album you can buy. You know, this is kind of trickery, how you call it now. I don't know why they're doing it, but... People, people don't want the whole product and then they listen once and then it's, you know, people are not listening anymore carefully, like, like yes. the old time. Yes, I agree. I agree. They don't pay attention. I'm the same nowadays. I'm the same. I'm, I'm watching the video and then, okay, it's cool, but I don't need the album. It's this kind of, uh, you know. No, no, no. I do need the album. So I will order <laughs> again. I have a master plan on a CD. I will get it on vinyl. So there are still some people that we still want to get the physical product. We still want yeah. to have that thing on our hand. So, <laughs> but I no, when I like something, I buy it always. I have always CD, like Judas Priest. I will buy it as well, the new one. You know this kind of stuff. Absolutely. But it's like uh, it's like a different trend. I don't know how how is it going in ten years again or something. It's different. It's, yeah. it's different generations, different ways of listening to music. It is what it yeah. is. We we cannot do anything about that. So the um, so last the last master plan album you uh, re recorded Halloween songs. So and now you worked on the first to remix the first remix. You worked on the anniversary edition of the debut album. So how do did this work even influenced the, your the songwriting for the next master plan album, or it did not at all. I think uh, in general the, the time difference between 20 years and now makes you different. You know, it's not that I learn more or diff writing better or something. It's just or even inspired. No, I'm not saying become. Yeah, I think I think I made a long break of, of writing songs. You know, okay, and uh, you have to relearn it a bit to be honest, because I was so 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 into my studio business was working for other bands last 15 years that i i mean the songwriting of this new album started already two three years ago Ooh, okay but we never finished it you know it's like the drums are recorded one year ago or one and a half year ago then i had some other bands again the between you know this kind of stuff 
And uh, then the singer makes jokes. When we're finishing the album, <laughs> can I hear it finally? He said, no. You hear it when we have the vocal melodies, not before. <laughs> and this stuff. And then you get sometimes scared of not getting by some friends, you know, to the internet already. <laughs> but it's it's like a different working. It's it's like, it's still teamwork with the keyboard player, Axel and me, and uh, mostly we wrote everything together. Then we have also some guest writers again. And... Uh, yeah, but it's it's a slower progress than 20 years ago, to be honest, because especially when I have clients coming and ringing here at my studio door and say, here, we give you money. Can you help us? And then, yeah, of course. Thank you. <laughs> you know, this kind of stuff. But now um, I had a long break, to be honest, and now I want to continue working for Master Plan and uh, maybe also for solo album. So I'm slowly getting hungry and I have a lot of material left, which is not not bad material, it's just doesn't fit to master plan or something. So you and said, I'm yeah, thinking, you will, re- uh, you, you are thinking of releasing another solo album, right? Did I hear? Yeah, not, not this typical Roland Grappo uh, neoclassic. Uh, some, something, not a copy of master plan, but something special, what, what maybe I'm singing on it, you know? I want to go feeling more free about doing what I want to do. Not not mm-hmm. like Master Plan has a certain image that people say, this is a mix of power metal, melodic and progressive music and this and that and that, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's hard to get out. Some some have different ideas and I say, nah, that doesn't fit. I don't want this. Then people, oh, this is not like what we expected. You know, this kind of stuff. Wow. ACDC fans want always the same song, <laughs> this kind of stuff. And uh, so when I when I do something, maybe it's 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 power metal, but maybe different, or I'm singing just on it, and which doesn't fit to our singer, or something like that. You know, I I'm totally want to make something, maybe even without record label, because it's sometimes difficult. You know, I had offer now from 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 one label from Italy, and but I said no, I don't want this kind of pressure, and uh, you know, I want to be free in my kind of music music kind music business or how you can call it when i want to do something i do it if not then i'm i don't want then somebody's behind me with a you have to (laughs) with deadlines (laughs) deadline is gone (laughs) pay the money back (laughs) is a level 10 still an active project that we had with uh, frontiers uh i don't know it was just one album correct yeah yeah i think i think the main guy behind was uh, Matt Sinner, and uh, but he has so many projects and and, and stuff, and uh, and now this uh, hmm, hard to say. Didn't speak to him a long time. I heard something something was uh, not so good with him, and uh, I would like to make another. Why not? I mean, I love Russell Allen. You know, mm-hmm. it's my favorite singer next to Yawn and Mikey Kiske. Different, different singer, but these are my favorites. These three. You you but, mentioned three amazing singers right now. <laughs> yeah, and not all the same. You know, it's like. Uh, but Russell, Russell, we worked on the first album on on the demos. You know, on the pre-production, and uh, he, he came when I was at Roy Z's place in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, I asked him if he if he want to sing on our album, and uh, he said, "Yeah, why not?" And then. I said, come to Los Angeles, I'll fly you in for one day only. And he listened to all the pre-production and then he was singing already melodies and I still have it, but it was without lyrics, anything. And uh, yeah, it was beautiful. And uh, we're still friends, but we, we never, I, I tried to work with him two years ago. Okay. But he said, he's so busy now. He's so busy, he doesn't find time for, for at least for one year, you know. Oh, so well. It. You never know. Since Roland is getting back on track now with writing music, maybe maybe for my solo album, I would I would ask him, and uh, maybe I'm not singing the whole album. Maybe just some parts, you know. There you go. Also, also master plan, I would sing maybe some small parts, and the new one. Roland, because I'm missing it. I like to sing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much for your time. I hope, I really hope to see master plan here in Chicago. Mm. So I don't know. Uh, maybe I will ask uh, Gus from Firewind to do something about it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, should be a nice festival there, or is there something or well, I I'm not a promoter. So anyhow, I hope that we spread the word out and 
people start listening to master plan with the, the, the anniversary one and so uh, yeah. we are waiting for the new master plan or whatever you do i mean we like you man thank you. we like your music thank you very much, thank you very much man. have a good one <laughs> bye bye good thank you ciao bye bye